I'm Mark DeRemer of Refurbished Gentleman and your creative director for Wise Out Paint. This week we're doing a thrift store makeover. I found this really beautiful solid wood dresser. It's solid on the sides, the front, through the doors, everything. It has these really cool knobs, gives it that really mid-century look. We're going to bring it back to being a little bit more modern. There's going to be some steps involved. It's a little worse for wear. I'm going to have to strip back all this old varnish. We'll expose some wood, we'll leave some wood. That way we'll paint some, but we'll see. So if you want to see how this turns out, stay tuned today. All right, here we go. So thrift store find, I, I mean, I saw it and knew I had to have it. Solid wood all throughout, but it was a hot mess. The drawers were gross. The finish was gross. Um, not really gross, just, you know, like failing finish. So at the end of the day, I knew I had my work cut out for me. Um, so of course I just started off taking this hardware off and I'm telling you the hardware was one of the selling points for me. It was just so cool. These square, very cool mid-century, um, which is very popular right now. And I decided I had to have it. So, and I already kind of knew what I was gonna do. I was gonna bring those back to life. So I popped those off. You can see it needed a little work but in the end turned out beautifully so the drawers of course if you're brand new to furniture painting and you've not done all wood pieces before number those things boy let me tell you sometimes the drawers only want to go back where they came out so i numbered them and then i get my big old brand new shop vac out which has been very helpful lately instead of using my vacuum cleaner from the house and i didn't get yelled at so Clean it started with the cleaning process just by simply vacuuming them out and then on to the fun. So as you guys probably know, if you've been following along with my journey over on Refurbished Gentlemen, I am now a brand ambassador for Surf Prep. And I actually bought this Surf Prep sanding system myself when I initially just needed something to use to make the job a lot easier. And as you're seeing here, it makes it easier. I'm in my garage inside with my shop vac and I'm sanding through these finishes A with ease and they were already failing anyway so it made it really easy regardless but the fact that I had this dust distraction on this surf prep uh yeah amazing I got so much work done that I would have had to take inside outside inside outside inside outside in between the times instead of just work you know, for a half hour here, half hour there, and not have to worry about taking it in and out, in and out. And then I had this one little part that was kind of failing, even even more like the glue, and it was raised anyway. So I just popped it off real quick, sanded that even. And once again, the finish, the varnish or whatever was on here was failing pretty good. So I just decided even if I was going to paint it, and at that point I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with this piece, I decided I was going to go ahead and sand it back in. I know this is fast forwarded, but it really was fast. I, I mean, the process this this thing, this surf pet took, I was, even I was surprised. I couldn't believe how quickly it just went right through this. And I left it kind of blotchy because I was thinking I was going to do a wash initially over this. So I wasn't really too sure about the, you know, the uneven sandedness. It was really just getting that, that old varnish off. So I had a base to figure out what the heck I was going to do, whether I was going to try to restain it and some nice yummy, like driftwood streakiness or not. Now it came to the front it was a whole nother ball of wax, but again, thankfully I've got this surf prep and I'm beating a dead horse here guys, but I'm telling you this thing is amazing. Imagine trying to hand sand this curved edge all the way around this piece. And again, the finish was failing, but it's real wood. So I either, you know, strip it and go through the process of that, or I just sand it. And it was just, so much quicker so much easier and i just decided to keep rolling with the sanding of this thing and it just was over before you knew it like an hour later i was done this thing and then came to the drawers of course for me i'm kind of a stickler about you know drippy paint on the inside of the drawers i know you're not going to see them 
when the drawer shut, but it's just one of those professional steps I like to take. So I will tape all the way around through the inside, through the sides to make nice, beautiful, crisp, clean lines just to ensure everything looks good. And then I finally decided what I was going to do. I decided to do a wash. So I'm using Wysol chalk synthesis paint and Snow Owl, a little spritz of water, and yeah, look at how pretty that is. So I took decided to do that, and I'm going to do a wash over just the drawers, and you're going to see why here as time goes on. But for the wash, it's just as simple as this. I'm spritz, spritz, spritzing, and I'm wiping off. I'm going to attach the live. I actually went live on Wysol Paint. Um, Facebook page to walk through each of the steps that I'm doing for these drawers from wash to well you'll see when it comes but I'll attach those in the video description if you want to go check those out on Facebook for a more detailed description of what the heck I'm doing here but as you can see I just sprayed painted on wiped off waiting till I get exactly how I wanted. I started off with a little bit more of the orange coming through and then I wasn't sure did I want to have it more white or more orange. Wasn't quite sure so I kept on going but you can see how just uh, stunningly beautiful that is. I mean doing a wash is a really cool effect and what's cool even further is if you do too much you can take some away. But for this what I'm initially doing here with my surf, surf prep is I'm getting rid of, rid of some grain raising. So if you ever added water to wood, it makes the grain get a, um, a little rough. And what you can do is you can bury the grain by go ahead and giving it an initial sand before you continue on to your next steps. So I, of course, was going to continue this wash because you're going to usually need to do at least two coats to get where you probably want to be. Um, so I buried the grain by sanding it down. And then once you continue adding any kind of spritzes in the water or water-based products over the top, that grain raising will stop. So you don't really have to worry about it anymore. And I'm just doing that same thing. I'm going through, spraying on, wiping off, and you're going in long streaks to try to get it even from one side to the other and just get it where I wanted to get it. And again, you don't really know until you get them all lined up next to each other. And that was after three coats. And after three coats, it was too cloudy, like too white. So I just, again, get my surf prep out. I put, I can't remember what grit, I had a fine grit on there and I just sanded it back to get it more in line with what I was looking for. Because the next step, I wanted there some, to be some contrast between the washed wood and what was coming up on top of it. So I just laid them all out and went drawer by drawer by drawer, sanding through. Where the heck am I going? Oh, huh, okay, there we go. I got a little bit stronger grit, I think, to really start pulling it back. You can see I just went a little bit too crazy with the wash. I want the wash to be down into the grain, but not on top of the grain. So I just kind of sanded it back for all the drawers and then lining them up allowed me to ensure that it was even. You can see here, they're all evenly done and had some streaking of thicker spots, less spots. And you're gonna see why having the streaks is kind of cool as we go on through to the next steps. And again, all of this steps that I've done to the drawer, except for the sanding part, it are on the lives that it will be in the album description below. If you're curious to just you know watch a more detailed description of why I did the wash I did, the, how I did the wash, and here we go. This is the fun part. So over top of the wash, I'm using our cutting edge stencils, Breezy Palm stencil, all over stencil. And this is where it really turned into something cool. So I lined up all the drawers. I kind I was just made sure that they were perfectly mushing together. I tried clamps, but they were moving all over the place. And as long as I was kind of gentle with the roll, they didn't move around at all, so it was good. Tape, tape the stencil down. I have our one hour enamel paint in the same color, Snow Owl, because I'm gonna end up painting the, the frame that I sanded 
in that same one hour enamel snow owl. So to get the same finish, because the one hour enamel will get you a satin finish as the frame, I decided to use that on the stencil as well. So it all became one kind of cohesive area. And again, this was a live, I walked through the specifics of the stencil and what I was using and actually how I was doing it down there in front on the blue shop towel. So again, in the out in the video description of this video, I'll have links to all of those Facebook lives. So you can kind of get a better like step by step of what I'm doing here, but I'm just rolling it on only took one coat. And with that combination of that kind of light orange, white washed wood, and the stencil, we had something really cool. I actually had to zoom in here because my wife decided to come out and join me while I was finishing up. Even she was like, wow, Mark, that's pretty cool. But she's not one for being on camera. So here we go. I'm just adding the last little piece in here. And this is going to continue all the way around the drawer from the top to the bottoms, around the edges. There were some updates I needed to do due to the fact that I had the stencil right at the edge instead of leaning over the edge. And you'll see that here in a second. And this is just a dense foam roller. I use the four inch. I think there's like a six and an eight inch, but I feel like the four inch really gives you better control because you really want a nice flat roll anytime you're using the cutting edge stencils. The cutting edge stencils are fairly thin, so you don't really need adhesive I didn't use any adhesion on the backs of this. See, my wife's sneaking in there, it's so funny. So they have this really cool kind of puzzle piece that you can sneak in there across the top to fill in any gaps. And that's something you do, like if you're using it on a wall and you took the stencil and stuck it all the way to the top of the ceiling and you had the little gap in between there from where the stencil was in the top of the ceiling. This will fill in that gap and allow it to be a very professional from top to bottom finish. And then this is what I was talking about earlier where I didn't overlap the edge. So I then I had to go back, but because it's like a puzzle piece, all I had to do was line it up. And then I was able just to, you know, sneak a little extra in there. I don't know, I have OCD. So that one little edge that was missing that didn't kind of continue like a, you know, a waterfall over the edge bugged me. Um, and I know I, this is something I was gonna sell. And I, I don't know, it's one of those things where professional work, you take these little extra steps and that was one of them. It was like a half inch, but I still wanted to make sure it was there. So this is what you're gonna get. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. And then I'm gonna top coat it with our Wise Owl Unscented Hemp Furniture Salve. This is gonna seal and protect the paint. That's our two inch palm. And I got have it in quartz because I use this for almost everything I top coat paint with. It's gonna seal and protect the paint. It's going to revive that wood a little bit. And you can see how it brought it back to life quite a bit. And not only that, but on drawers, you can use it for a whole bunch of other things like the wood. So I've already sanded the insides of these drawers because they're all wood to clean them up a little bit. And next I'm gonna take that same salve and apply it throughout the entire inside of the drawer. And it's just gonna, you know, clean, revive, bring that wood back to life. It is oil-based, but don't freak out. If you use it on the inside of your drawers, it's gonna dry and it's not gonna transfer onto your clothes. You just wanna wipe it clean or wipe the excess and allow it to dry. And then last but not least, your drawer glides. If you're ever looking for that trick to make it glide better, Furniture Sav is the way to go. I pretty much do this on any wooden drawer glides that I get in and through the shop. And that's our unscented hemp Furniture Sav and our two inch Wiseau Premium Brush. And now we're on to the fun, finally. First time ever spraying with our Wise Owl Stingray Sprayer made by Apollo. And when I say first time spraying, I mean first time spraying ever in my entire life. This was the first time. It was quite nerve wracking. Uh, I still can't believe I videotaped myself doing it. But this was the clear primer. So at this time, 
I wasn't sure if I was going to do any distressing, so I used our Wiseau Paint Clear Primer over the wood, uh, especially since I sanded through it. I wanted to make sure we blocked any tannins that were going through, and because I knew I was going to use our one hour enamel uh, in Snow Owl, we definitely needed to have a primer. We we're recommended to use a primer with the one hour enamel paints because it does not have the same adhesive qualities as you will find in a uh, chalk, in our chalk synthesis paint. So you're gonna need to use a primer. And our primers are made specifically to work with our paints. So this is a great one. I sprayed, it took me, I'd say 10 minutes, I think, from start to finish to spray one coat, another 10 minutes to spray another coat. And I was blown away both by how it sprayed, one, with this amazing new Wiseau Paint Stingray Sprayer, and just how quickly this got done. Uh, normally brush, brushing on, you know, four coats of something is gonna take more than, what was it, ended up being 40 minutes worth of total spray time. So I sprayed, <laughs> I'm such a nut, yep. So this, I believe, is going to be our one hour enamel. But it took, like I said, I mean, it's such a short amount of time. You just spray, you let it dry, come back, spray, and it's like 10 minutes or 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Yeah, this is gonna be the snow wall here. And you're done. And for someone, first time ever spraying furniture, I was kind of like wondering why I hadn't sprayed before this. So here we go, spraying with one hour enamel, snow owl, and look at that coverage. This is the, one of the things that blew me away too, is spraying, painting with white, I don't care what white you're using, sometimes takes three, four, five coats. Now our paints are pretty good with that, but even whites, depending on what you're going over, are difficult. But spraying it just went on so evenly, it was crazy. So it filled, even this with a lot of grain that it had to fill, it filled, it went on evenly. I don't know, I was just, I was blown away. First first piece ever spraying, first week ever spraying, and I think I'm pretty well hooked at this point. I built a spray booth in my garage, as you can see what's going on around me. It's an eight by 10 spray booth, just in a corner of my garage. I'm in Clearwater, Florida, and it's you know a little bit difficult to be outside certain times either the wind or the heat um, is not conducive for spraying in so i decided to do this and i'm actually going to do an entire youtube video on that process as well oh yeah you see my that is from harbor freight that is a hydraulic lift cart i think is what it's called i'll throw that in that in the video description too but absolutely amazing uh lifts up and down the piece that's in there. You can roll it in and out as you need to. So like I spray, and well for this week especially, I sprayed, rolled this one out, dropped it down, rolled another one in with that hydraulic cart. It was pretty cool. All right, so I think we're gonna go on to coat number two, just because I wanted to show you, this is dry one coat. And I mean, coverage was ridiculous. Um, and I don't think I've ever painted anything white from raw wood with two coats. And this was the time. This is going to be two coats of our Snow Owl one hour enamel. And that's all it needed. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. Um, one of the things I want to mention is as you see things going on in there, it starts to get a little cloudy. I have an, a fan that's exhausting out behind the dresser and I have a, a fan behind me in this video that's pulling air in but even with that the the paint will linger so you please 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 want to make sure that you have a respirator I would wear a respirator uh, rather than just a cloth mask or something like that because you really want to protect you know inhaling any of paint um, it's just one of those safety precautions. And of course I had iPro on too, and just ensuring. And once I saw the filters after I sprayed Earth and Ash, which is another video coming, I knew having that sprayer or the respirator was really important just to be 
totally safe. But look at that coverage. You can see the reflection of me in white. Look at that. How cool is that? <laughs> and I go down with my hydraulic cart and then spray the top. It holds a quart. This one took me, I think, half, half a quart. I think a little less, actually, for this one to spray the whole thing in case you're wondering how much paint I use I used. This is my first time ever spraying. I'd say it was about half a quart of the one hour enamel in Snow Owl. And it gave me two solid coats. And with those two, we had complete coverage. I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, check it out. And then here it is. I mean, we went from this old decrepit thing that I could see through the ugly and see what it could be. And we made it into something special. And I tell you right now, it sold the morning I dropped it off. The person actually was buying it while I was still there after dropping it off. So if you're curious about something cool, uh, painted and wood look, maybe look into trying to use those cutting edge stencils on some raw wood or wash wood like I did here and then if you really want to make your life easy definitely look into our wise all stingray sprayer and it was absolutely incredible spraying for my first time ever both primer and our one hour enamel paint just incredible flawless flat finish uh, first time ever again so but if you have any questions about it please let me know um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe, like, notification bell, all the things. Hope everybody has a blessed day. And as always, happy painting.